Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Lincolnshire series, a district of 56 parishes in the north of Lincolnshire. Let's see which one we're visiting today. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire, everybody. Today, we're right on the banks of the Humber at a place which used to have a ferry which crossed the Humber into the East Riding of Yorkshire. And that ferry terminal was here, down this road to the bank of the Humber and along a pier. And it took you across the water and landed in Hull. We've already seen the other side of the river where the ferry would have docked. That was way back in the Hessel episode in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Today we're talking about the North Lincolnshire side of the water. This is New Holland. This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. This might be one of the more unusual settlements we've ever come across. New Holland sits on the south bank of the Humber, almost equidistant from both Barrow-upon-Humber and Gox Hill. Before 1800, New Holland simply didn't exist. The land which it occupied was nothing more than a creek running northwards into the Humber. In 1803, a small ferry service began from that creek. There was already a public ferry from Barton to Hull at the time, and the ferry here wasn't really a ferry, rather it was a front for the smuggling of goods. Holland's gin was one such commodity which was smuggled a lot, something which in time would lead to New Holland's name. In 1826, things started to change rapidly, with improvements to the New Holland ferry. It wasn't long before it became the preferred Humber crossing point. By 1836, mail coaches were using New Holland as opposed to Barton. And then the railways came along in the 1840s. The ferry and its facilities were sold to the railway companies and New Holland was transformed almost overnight into a railway village. It looks a little different now, thanks to the Humber Bridge. The ferries have now gone thanks to that, but the old ferry pier still exists, albeit part of a modern dock. There are still clues as to New Holland's past all around the place, so let's go and find them. To begin this episode, we're taking a drive around the village to the start point for our main walk. This means travelling through the tiny hamlet of Barrow Han, notable for being the HQ of the AFO Choir. This drive will see us loop around New Holland on a road called Lincoln Castle Way, named after one of the paddle steamer ferries which once crossed the Humber to Hull. When the Humber Bridge was completed in 1981, the ferries which ran here became obsolete, although the Lincoln Castle was withdrawn from service three years earlier in 1978. The Humber Bridge also changed the local road numbering. The road through the village is the old A15, and it's now known simply as Barrow Road. The modern A15 now crosses the Humber Bridge. And following the demise of the ferry service, New Holland would become a small port. Lincoln Castle Way exists to allow the many HDVs which use it to access it without driving through the village. It's a sensible idea.
Now, of course, the dock here in New Holland is the major landmark. It's the one which you can't avoid. It's uh, it's there and it will always be there. It's, uh, it's uh, one of those things which must get its own little section later in this video. But this is a village that's got a few other things as well. Most notably, something that stands right next to the dock, and that's this building here, because this has got a, an interesting past all by itself. Let's talk a bit about this. New Holland Dock handles a lot of timber from elsewhere in Europe. This imposing building is the base of Arbor Forest Products, the UK's leading independent timber importer and processor. Replacing an original building dating from 1826, this was erected in 1851 by William Kirk for the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway. It was a pub called Yarborough Hotel or the Yarborough Arms. It would later be renamed to the Lincoln Castle Hotel after the former paddle steamer ferry and its pub license would be transferred to a small single storey building almost next door. That building is where we find the parish notice board. This is on the side of the New Holland Community Centre, originally built in 1857 as the Yarborough Literary Institute, a sort of local library. The Railway Man's Coal Club were once based here too. Since 2017, the pub element of the building has closed, but it's still open and it's still well used. Now also on the side of the community centre we've got one of these. This is in memory of New Holland Airfield, which opened in 1916 and closed in 1920. There's a cafe in this building too called Memories. As long as the dock exists in New Holland, this will never go out of business. A steady stream of dock workers keep this place going. Next, we have a group of terraced houses in Manchester Square. These look almost like they could have been built in a mining area. That's no coincidence. These are the oldest houses in New Holland. These, like the pub, were established by the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway, which also explains their name. New Holland would basically expand southwards from this point here. And part of that expansion gave it a church. This is Christchurch, built between 1897 and 1901 by C.H. Fowler, who had originally intended it to have aisles and a spilet on the tower. It's now closed. Next, we have Cook's Catering, based in an old co-op store. This looked closed, but Google still lists it as open. I'm hoping so, because their website says they have a passion for all things Lincolnshire. My kind of place. So New Holland is, technically speaking, a linear village, and it's laid out along one main road. This one right here, where all the main sort of amenities and things are, with the dock at the far end. But of course, with modern development nowadays, you can walk around it in a circle. There's a there's a few other ways rather than Lincoln Castle Way. I'm not going to go all the way around there again. Uh, I'm going to go down Westburn Avenue here, which will loop us back onto this road, past this building, which we'll talk about more in a few moments, and then I'll go down Oxmarsh Lane, where I can get to the playing fields, uh, and then from there, it's just basically a walk to the end, uh, to the end where the roundabout is, uh, and then there's a footpath which will take us back towards the school and towards the dock. That's my plan. The older houses in the village are all along the old A15. There are newer areas too though. Around the back of Barrow Road is Westburn Crescent, which has a few cul-de-sacs coming off it. At its southern end, the newest properties in the village are still being constructed. New Holland continues to grow, despite the railways and the ferries now being gone. Back onto Barrow Road, we've got a small garden next on the left, with a path which seemingly runs into the housing estate. There's a bright pink memorial bench next to this for a Julie Smith. And so to this old chapel building. This is the former Primitive Methodist Chapel, in fact, which was founded in 1877 and it closed in 2005. I'm a little surprised nothing has been done with it, in fact. Similarly with this old shop, this row this sits on is called Turner's Buildings, which amongst other things once had a coal merchant along it, H and M A Woods. So now we're on Oxmarsh Lane, now down here there's the playing fields, which uh, we're going to go through in a moment, just there. And there's also a level crossing. There are two level crossings in New Holland. That one there is Oxmarsh level crossing and the other one is close to the dock. The playing fields are of a decent size. They effectively run all the way along the back of Barrow Road between Oxmarsh Lane and Albert Street. There's a small playground and a football pitch too. 
And that pitch, by the way, is used by the local football team, New Holland Villa, members of the Scunthorpe and District Football League. I would imagine this building is their changing rooms, but I can't really confirm that. If it is, you really can't get much more grassroots than this, can you? Oh, and uh, speaking of roots, that brings us to our next thing. This isn't a place known for its agriculture, so I've no idea why this would just be left idly alongside the road. It's an old hand-drawn plough, which I thought was pretty cool. And Albert Street brings us back to Barrow Road again. We pass a garage on the way. There's two garages in the village, in fact. The other one is New Holland Dock Garage. Now, New Holland used to have a pub called the Albert Inn. Unfortunately, though, there isn't really many records of it. The last time it was mentioned was in the 1860s, and nobody really knows where it was. However, most people think it's this house here on the end of Albert Street, because that is Albert House. No doubt with this pub though, this is the Magna Charter, named after another former paddle steamer used for the ferry service. Built as a relief steamer, it was scrapped in 1924. Almost next door, this small green building, is the New Holland HQ of the first Goxhill and Barrow upon Humber Scout Group. Let's talk public transport next. You can reach the village by bus from Barton. It's the number 260 you need. There might not be any ferries these days, but there are still trains and we'll get to those later. Just before we hit Marsh Lane, there's another little notice board. This one looks like it's to do with the local WI and it's still decked out in Platinum Jubilee stuff. And if you want any eggs, you can get some for £2 a dozen from this house on Marsh Lane. Now, let's talk a bit about the water features out here. So on Marsh Lane, we meet two streams. There's one that runs alongside it, underneath the front of these houses. And there's another one which runs perpendicular. And down the side of that stream, there's a footpath. And this is where we're going now to get back to the dock, to the where we started at the beginning of the route. This will take us around New Holland's primary school and then into uh, the dock, which you can just see above these trees. Now, I don't know how far into the dock I'll be allowed to go with the camera, but there is a public footpath that runs through part of it. So hopefully I'll be able to use that to capture as much of the dock as I can, because it is rather an important landmark. Up this footpath we find a bench with quite a nice tiled mosaic on it. As expected I found nothing about this, but what a brilliant piece of artwork. It's a shame it's hidden away behind the village. The water channels by the way which we've just seen are likely the remains of the creek New Holland sits on, or perhaps they were man-made for drainage. This area after all was a marsh at one time. Next we've got a garden. These clever railings depict some of the village's history. Notice the large paddle wheel. It's of the type found on the paddle steamers, which once crossed the Humber. This garden is in front of New Holland School, and that paddle wheel is also the school's logo. This is a joint Church of England and Methodist primary school. Back to the road now. Now we're off to the dock. By the way, this grass verge is protected. It's what's known as an ornamental verge, and if you try to park on it, you'll get a £100 fine. Okay, so this is where things are gonna to start to get interesting. Like I said earlier, there is a public footpath which goes through some of this industrial estate, some of this dockyard. Where it goes, you go th across the crossing here, and you see the lorry is turning right. Oh, it's turning left, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's somewhere up there. I think I can see the public footpath sign, actually. Uh, so we'll attempt to go up there, see where it takes us, and hopefully we'll catch some of the dock by doing this. If not, well, it doesn't matter. You know, it's private property for a reason. But as long as there's a public footpath, I should, in theory, be able to catch some of this, if not all of it. The railway line holds a lot of clues as to how life used to be here. The village is still served by New Holland Station, which opened in 1981, but it used to have two railway stations. The new station replaced New Holland Pier Station and New Holland Town Station, which both opened in 1848. New Holland Town was located in this general area. 
New Holland Town's purpose was for what you'd describe as conventional use by the locals. New Holland Pier was used by people wanting to cross the Humber via the ferry service. Now, if you look carefully at the railway lines, you can see how things used to be different. As we head into the dock, we can follow this footpath towards the Humber, which will show us. Look at the ground in this shot. This was the junction where trains branched for the pier. You can see how the old lines disappear under the very tarmac we're walking on. Once you reach this corner, the path goes straight up towards the Humber and then turns left. You can't get across into this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back from whence I came. Oh, there's a train coming, we'll catch this. That was good timing, wasn't it? <laughs> that's, how, that's heading for New Holland Station. So we'll go back along here and we'll follow the other footpath and see where that goes, the one that goes sort of into the dock as it were. See if we can catch anything more going that way. The answer is yes, I could. Welcome to New Holland Dock, which these days handles mostly bulk cargo in two locations, one of which is the pier, the former terminal for the ferry to Hull. The other is this small tidal dock, which was built in around 1848 with the coming of the railway. As you can see, it's not very big. The tidal dock generally only accommodates one vessel at a time. New Holland Pier, though, has berths for three ships and is also capable of accommodating larger vessels, mainly due to it being located in a deeper part of the river. So I don't really want to walk any further than this barrier, which is why I've stopped here. Even though the footway does continue, I don't really know where it goes. Could be leading somewhere I shouldn't really be. Uh, but I know I'm safe here. Now, this is okay because you can see this is one of the, the places where ships dock. Obviously that one there is loading with something. And in the distance, you can see two cranes. Now along there, there's a pier. And at the end of that pier is where the ferry used to run from New Holland over the water to Hull. These days, it uh, loads boats over there. That's what the cranes are doing. Uh, not a very big dock, but uh, important nonetheless. It handles timber, I believe, New Holland Dock, which comes from the Baltic states, uh, Latvia and Estonia mainly, I think. Uh, so there you go, that's New Holland Dock. That's uh, about as much of it as I can feasibly show you. Like I said, I could possibly walk a bit further and see what's around there, but uh, I don't know where it goes and it might lead me somewhere where I shouldn't be. But I think you've got the, uh, the general gist of it, haven't you? So I'm gonna head back to the car uh, and sign this one off, I think. That'll be New Holland in the books. Is it big enough for a picture bit? Maybe. Let's see what I can find for you.
So here we are at New Holland Station to finish this one off. And uh, it's quite a small station this. This platform's not very long and it's only a single track line, you see. There is another line, but half of its rails are missing, so there ain't gonna be no trains running on that. I wonder how many passengers this sees on an annual basis. Can't imagine it's very many. I don't think many people will be uh, coming here to sample New Holland's delights. I think I'm one of a select few, <laughs> but uh, there we go. There is a way to find out, by the way, if this is the least used station in Lincolnshire. At the back of my mind, there is something which tells me it is, and that is to go and check out Jeff Marshall, who's a fellow YouTuber. He's visited every single station in the United Kingdom, and he does a least used station series. Um, so yeah, something in the depths of my memory tells me that New Holland is Lincolnshire's least used. I could be wrong, but uh, without having his channel in front of me, I don't know without looking so anyway time for me to move on to my next one here in North Lincolnshire and it will see me take on another one which is its own post town just like Ulsby was a few episodes ago I've been Andy also known as the village idiot this has been the parish of New Holland and I'm out